Broadcast is live. That one? Okay. Should we open for the broadcast now? Uh, recording this real time. Hey, whenever you guys have a chance, do you want to share those links for the test data to the Google Doc in the uh, either the Hangout or the um, uh, WebEx? Yeah, so just get those last black ones and give me uh, those maybe and we, Yeah, we will we'll repost it. We posted it uh, early on, but as people join it, I don't think it shows up on their feed. So, yeah, we can repost that. Yeah, that sounds good. Thank you. Somebody either tough to get too long. Sorry. How many rows of these uh, the white ones do you need? What? I've been cutting all these white tops. Okay, I guess they're going to my stream collection. Okay, if you guys. Need to raise the them? You guys step out of the. This one will, yes. And that's that's what we use to show the actual final dimensions. So. Can you guys hear me on this webcam? Yes we can. Sweet. Can you can you guys hear us pretty well on your guys' end? Yeah, sounds great. Perfect. Let's hear it. Yes. I finally got my microphone working. I'm on a different computer. 
webcam shortly. Hold on. All right. Awesome. We'll be ready to start here in about a minute or so. And then uh, during the actual broadcast, we'll keep it on this one so then the Google Broadcast will record that screen. Yeah. And then this picture will record the final one. The bottom one and and hers will record, we'll record that one. Yep. yep. Exactly. And then if they're actually on the chat, they can switch between them and see all of them at once. Yeah. This. Raise your blade again. Come in. Yeah. I'm also recording whoever is uh, sharing their screen on the WebEx, so that's being recorded on the WebEx side of it. Okay, okay. that's David. Yeah, that's David. That, he has all the data that's going to show up on there, so. Oh, okay, let's go. I'm ready. All right, we're ready to begin on our end. So, for those of you that are on, thanks for coming. This is the wind tunnel test of the Boeing Compact Project model. This is the accumulation of the two semester senior design project that we have. And so, this this is going to be a presentation of the model and the wind tunnel itself, and we'll switch over to a camera showing the wind tunnel and the data, data recording in real time, just to show you guys what it looks like physically, and then after that we'll have to do a little bit more setup on the model itself, and then we'll actually begin the testing. So just a brief summary of the model. Um, the model is five feet tip to tip. It gives the scale factor to be about one foot for the model for every 42.8 feet on the actual wing design that we came up with. The fuselage length is 5.75 feet and the fuselage width is 0.5 feet. Um, the model was 3D printed by Stratasys in Minnesota. It was constructed out of ABS plastic. It consists of nine printed pieces. There's three fuselage sections, two wing sections, uh, two raked tips, two blended winglets, and then the, we had some internal structure that we manufactured here at Purdue to help support the model. So we'd like to thank James Berlin for helping out with the model. The Stratasys provided the model for this project for free. And so we're very grateful for that. And it's, uh, when we switch to a different camera, we'll actually show you the model. It's, it's very nice. Um, just a summary of the fuselage. We had it split into three parts. We have the, the nose section, the main section, and the rear section. Um, the sections are connected to each other by magnets and rods. Uh, also, as you see at the top, there's interlocking slots between each fuselage section to help hold them together. And then there's a middle spar that runs through the fuselage to help give it structural support. Uh, the wing summary, we have it split into two sections. There's the main wing section, and then we have uh, removable tip devices. So we're going to do uh, performance evaluation with the two different wingtip devices of the rake tips and the blended winglets. Um, the wingtip devices are connected to the main wing by little magnets and printed tabs on the winglet that connect into the wing. And then the main wing is connected to the fuselage by aluminum spars that stick out from the fuselage. So for the wind tunnel testing, uh, some, a brief summary of the operating conditions that we're going to have. Uh, we're going to be running at a tunnel speed of 40 miles per hour. Uh, we're going to go over an angle of attack range from negative 5 to 15 degrees. Um, Reynolds number based on the mean aerodynamic cord, about 2.74 to the fifth. And the dynamic pressure is going to be around uh, 261 pascals. Uh, we have a, a little bit of summary of the wind tunnel testing that we're going to perform on this slide, and then we also follow up a word document describing the test plan in more detail. Uh, first, we're going to look at finding the lift drag and pitching moment for both wingtip devices on the model. Um, we were going to we're going to do some flow visualization around the model. Uh, we won't be able to do the smoke flow. Uh, we weren't able to get some uh, small issues with it worked out, but we will still be doing the long tuft analysis around the model, and then for the flow visualization on the surface, we'll be using uh, surface flow with oil and then uh, tufts on the wing. Uh, 
and the picture on the right just shows what the tufts look like. So they'll, they'll move with the airflow as it's going over the wing. This is a picture of the model pieces uh, that we had when we got them here at Purdue. So you can see somewhat of the size of the model. And then when we switch to a different camera, you can actually see it in the tunnel. And this slide it just shows an overview of the wind tunnel test section that we're using. And if um, I think you just want to pull up the power or the word document uh, as we switch uh, documents here. So this is the wind tunnel test plan. Uh, we have the rake tip and the blended winglet device. So first we're going to look at doing force measurements, and then we're going to do flow visualization as well. Uh, first we're going to look at the rake tip. We're going to do we're going to measure the lift drag and pitching moment, and we're actually going to go from negative 10 degrees to 20 degrees, or until the wing stalls, and we're going to go up by two degree intervals. Uh, setup time will be about three minutes. Time at each angle of attack for it to settle down before we record the data will be about a minute. So overall, it'll take about 18 minutes. For the flow visualization, um, we're not doing the smoke, but we will do the, the tufts. And so we'll do that over a range of angle of attack. And then we'll also do the oil at the cruise speed, the cruise conditions, and also at the stall angle of attack. And there's a summary of the times for the flow visualization. So that, that'll take about 90 minutes for the rake tip for all those tests. And then we'll do the same thing for the blended winglet. So we'll switch it to the camera that we have here so we can show the tunnel set a little bit. So as you can see, that's the, the model in the tunnel itself. Let's see if I can zoom in on it. So you can see it's a very nice looking model. Uh, right now we have the brake to wingtip devices on it. We have them in black so they stand out from the model a little bit. Um, we have two mounts under the wing to support the model and then the mount in the back is used to adjust the angle of attack. And if we zoom out, it down a little bit. Um, the machine right here next to the computer is what we're using to record the data in the tunnel. Um, the you can't see the, the dimensions on and measurements on the machine very well from the camera, but we're recording the, the total temperature, uh, the delta. What? There you go. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> yeah, it's it's still a little it's still a little blurry. Um, yeah, so we're looking at recording the total temperature, uh, the velocity in the wind tunnel, the drag lift and pitching moment, and then there's a couple other uh, the side force moment, the roll and the yaw. We're not we're not recording those for these experiments. And then at the bottom is the angle of attack. Measure what it is throughout the test. So now we're going to level the aircraft in the tunnel. We'll call that our zero angle of attack. So go ahead and uh, the okay. after we after we get the the zero angle of attack set for the model, we close the wind tunnel door and then we'll begin the first test where we're recording the lift drag and pitching moment. Also, for those of you that are speaking, uh, I was the one that was speaking during that beginning part. My name is Sean Olsofsky. Uh, I was a project manager for this project. Sean. Set it going down. Yeah. Hold it. Yeah. Have to 
going down to the back line. Can you guys still hear it pretty well on your end, uh, those that are on the call? Yes. Yeah, sounds great. Perfect. So we'll all be closing the door. Uh, after we close the wind tunnel door, we'll, we'll tear the system so it sets the measurements on the machine to zero. And then after that, we'll start up the wind tunnel and then um, we'll do our angle of attack speed. So we tear the tunnel so we can set the angle that's currently at as zero angle of attack right now. The device is reading it as negative three. So we'll, we'll, we're going to make that our zero and then we'll go from there. So also, we have three different views of the tunnel that you guys can look at. The one that's currently on the screen is uh, a side view so we can pan through the tunnel throughout the experiment. There is a top view looking down at the wings, uh, so you can see, especially for the when we do the experiment with the tufts and the oil flow, you can get a good shot of it. And then we also have a shot of the underside of the wing, so um, when we get, so we can do the flow visualization under there as well. If you actually look at the top-down view of the wing of the model, you can see all the tufts that are on there. So uh, during, the, during this first experiment, even though we'll be looking for the, the lift the dragon pitching moment, you'll, the tufts will still be on there. They won't, they won't influence the results significantly. It's a thing in, in Google Hangout you can do to take pictures. Oh. Like screenshots, basically. Who's taking the pictures? Baby and Sarah. Baby and yeah, taking pictures. <laughs> I'm not taking pictures. That's Sarah. Oh, oh Sarah. Oh, Very so there's, excited. There's a little, there's, there's a little picture icon by you, Fabian. Don't lie. <laughs> I should have just been sneaky and used Snip Tool instead, but I went for the app. We would have never known. Even more like long views away. No, I can cut them. Let's go like three big ones at the top of the board. Like the ones like we did for the. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we'll start the test here soon. Our data recording computer is um, having a little bit of difficulty to kind of grow. Oh, yeah. I'm totally good at that too. Can we blame David Kuhn for the data computer causing totally. trouble? Totally. Oh yeah. It's a Windows and he's a Mac guy. So. It's true. But that's really good too. So, yeah, exactly. Doesn't know what to do. Okay, there you go. Are those too long? Uh, uh, I am. I, oh, come on. I know, but nothing's going on. Yeah. You're blocking a prime view of the model. Very true. Prime view. 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 Prime
I did stains. <laughs> Where did stains? Actually, it was stain like right here by the collar. Well, I don't know what you're driving today. Yeah, yeah you're the spot and stain. Yeah, let's give you a more interesting view. Maybe you go crazy with the freak. I don't know. On the backs of my shirt? <laughs> I don't know. Sean, you have this right? Right there? Yes. I trust you. The data computer on the WebEx? Yeah, I see the wind tunnel monitor and then the WebEx window in the background. Okay. Yeah, you can see it. Yeah. I'm not really paying attention to that, but I'm under the effort view, but it's recording all this, so we'll have it afterwards. Okay. Oh, I forgot, no way. We'll, we'll take the video from YouTube and edit out all the <laughs> parts of what we're not doing with Tunnel Tesla. Oh, what is that? Top Gun music playing? Yeah, right. Of course, of course. I can't do my Top Gun music. Top Gun. Uh, with two, two, uh, I think. You're on camera too, so we'll. So where are uh, Dave French and Dr. Sullivan hiding? Out of camera. Out of camera. Just so that you can't see him. <laughs> of course. Jump over to control and the tunnel, and then uh, you can be in charge of controlling this camera. Okay. And you, you can also control what you are looking at. Yep. For now, I just these two views probably because this one, just, we don't have anything on the other side of it right now, so you're not really going to see too much from it. Okay, great. But you, I mean, you'll see it. Okay, see, I think the other side of the project is milk. You know, I guess you could put oil on. Oh, oh, is there a point yeah. of having the camera on the other side of the back of the smoke? No, you're not. Okay, well, let's fix it more. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Come on, I'm good. It'll, it'll be good for you. Where the tape thing go? 30 minutes of chops. <laughs> that, that one. Here, start making oh. stuff. I got this. <laughs> It's very convenient. Shakes fists. Sean, you want to start doing the tape? This and I'll just cut the pieces. I it. also said she went up her on it. Okay. Okay. 
Where are we putting these? Apparently we're putting them on the bottom. Well, we just closed the town. I think we're well, not We have just, to change out the... Right now, just look at making the tufts. We won't put the tape on it. We, won't, we don't have anywhere to put them. Oh no, Jeff has on her arm early. <laughs> I know she's like, it's just like, oh my god. <laughs> Do we have a razor blade? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I'm sure I have gloves here somewhere. Thanks. I didn't see one immediately, but it wasn't dumb. Time to go. Hey, we're gonna start with eighteen meters per second. Uh, so we're starting now. Um, currently, we're at two meters per second for velocity and steadily climbing. Should the uh, data readout on the um, WebEx computer be live? So it's um, for David, it's live whenever he clicks the run button and then it'll record the data and he'll put it into an Excel. So it's live it. on the monitors, but not on his. Okay, yeah, I just wanted to make sure uh, since we weren't seeing that move. Okay. Here, we're going to go right here. 
for more of it. It's the glare though, it's not where this is or isn't. Because it's so easy to not just be doing stuff all the, all the time. But when like 1.30 or 2 o'clock rolls around in the afternoon, if you're tired, everything is so quiet over there. You're just... Oh, work? Uh, so... Um, no, but... I mean, you're always working, but... Uh, really struggling. Well, a lot of them. I want to make it like 20. 
the person that has the So as Professor Sullivan was saying, uh, we switched to the top view. Uh, up here, we were at six, okay. about 16 degrees angle of attack. And then we went up to 18, and you, you can see that the the wing is pretty much stalled at this point. The, the tufts are going up and back and forth in the normal direction. So um, we should be able to see this result in the data. And we're just paying attention. How will we see this in the data, John? What are we looking for? We're looking for a decrease in the lift coefficient, uh, separation on the back of Yes. If, uh, what is going to be, if we look at our uh, lift versus drag plot, what are we looking for? See a big, a big increase in drag, and it'll actually come back down to a, a lower lift coefficient. We'll go up two data points yeah, yeah. along one uh, for one lift coefficient. Okay. So right now we're gonna we're gonna check the data before we decide if we're gonna continue on with this run or shut the tunnel off. So bear with us, and you you actually be able to see it on the WebEx the data. It's about, uh, yeah, it's about six inches, Fabian. Thank you. No problem. All right, so we're, we're recording the data screen on the WebEx, but for the sake of the broadcast, we're also going to pull the data file over here so we can show it. So we're getting that on the thumb drive right now. We'll, we'll port that over and then pull it up on this computer here soon. Thank you. 
so oh there's a dagger that's right flower right. flowing okay up oh, and then okay. flat and flowers Sorry, all the I just keep breaking off your things. Yeah, have a nice thing. Put it here. Are you going in? Almost. Try it. Hard. That's right. Do right, you guys see the Excel file on your guys' computer? Yep. Well, this is the uh, first run uh, of the uh, rake tip uh, showing uh, the upper left drag puller with both the drag coefficient. Looks like a normal ring. We stalled it on both sides on the low uh, angle of attack, negative angle of attack side, installing it on the uh, Upper angle attack. So, um, usable range is right, is right in this range of uh, CLs, which is like minus 0 0.2 to about 0.4. And for this Reynolds number, which is installing uh, significantly after that. Uh, lift versus angle of attack is a straight line. Uh, one of the issues that we're uh, talking about is backlash. So, uh, Jennifer, you know what backlash is now? So, so it's like any uh, screw system, if you screw something in, you're pushing against the threads. And then when you go to take it out, you turn the screw back almost quarter or quarter and eighth of the turn before it hits the threads on the back side. It's called backlash. So it doesn't start moving, and you're back to the Here's some of the data you took from backlash. So it takes the angle of attack down. Of course, it should be afraid it is. And then, terrible stall. <laughs> terrible stall. This would not be a good commercial aircraft. Uh, stall like that goes from here to there. Snap uh, people's heads uh, uh, significantly. Oh. And drag coefficient uh, on the bottom versus uh, angle of attack uh, also. So, what we're going to do.
now let's just take a second set of data. Uh, we'll try and fill in uh, some of the data points. Uh, we know uh, from looking at this, well, uh, we can't get more negative than about 11 and 12 degrees. We'll start there again and, and drive it up to about, uh, again, about 16 degrees. Uh, it doesn't matter exactly. We, well, yeah, fill in those numbers a little bit. Come back. Okay. Question for you. Same answer. We got the. Uh, so I'll bring her down to a negative 10. Let's do it again. So if you didn't hear what Professor Sullivan said, we're, we're going to rerun through the angles of attack again for the right tip, and we're going to compare it to the previous data to make sure that we're getting the same results, to, just to see if there's any discrepancies in the experimental setup. So after we go through the range, range of angle of attacks, we'll pull the data file back up and we'll put it back on you again. Thank you. 
Where's the... background is Dr. Sullivan climbing on top of the wind tunnel to put up a new camera, FYI. <laughs> All this currently controlling the camera. I like that. Dr. Sullivan is the one climbing up there, not one of you guys. He doesn't let us go up there. How come? I have no idea. Well, well, right well Sean went up there yesterday, but I guess because it's going right now, it's his baby, he doesn't want it broken. I don't know. You gotta scroll back up to him. I think this is worthy of a picture, right? If we're taking pictures after all. Sure, why not?
do a couple runs at each, a couple times through each thing. Well, we did it twice, so. I'm almost curious to see if I can try this. That looks good. We waiting to see if the tips fall out. Are they? Hey, my chest. How's the data look? How's the data look? Let us see the data. 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 Let I can do that. Uh, is this yeah. link on It's frozen. Why is it frozen? That's not. Oh. <laughs> We're well, bringing up another one.
I'm getting all dizzy over here. That's part of the plan. While we are waiting here, I see there's a question about the uh, strings on the kit. And so, when we're, you know, when the wings unstall, the uh, tops are more or less aligned with the streamline. But we do see them going a little bit to the side, especially as we get farther outboard and more towards the trailing edge. Uh, this is obviously from the fanwise flow that you get off of these flood wings. And then as we crank up the angle of attack, and the separation occurs, and we get the separated flow, the nice big vortices rolling, rolling around back there. You'll see this, the strings just go, uh, go haywire. But when we do get everything, hopefully, fixed here, you should see the first row of tufts. They are a little squirrely. That's the, the uh, leading edge vortex. The ones after that are more or less aligned with the free stream. And you'll see them slight, start to um, slightly turn out towards the tip as the uh, fanwise flow gets gets stronger. And then hang, hanging off the tip are those three long those three long strings. And if you were actually here, you can see that they are spinning um, in in circles as they are in the tip the tip or uh, tip vortex. If we had the smoke going that would be even better because then you could actually see the whole thing and see how it gets dispersed off off, off the end there. But unfortunately uh, we don't we don't have that. So then he went here and straight started it? Yep. Everyone. 
That looks like a pretty good match. Yeah, I'd say so. CL versus Alpha for two sweeps. Uh, uh, excellent repeatability. Uh, same for Brad. We have a couple of Pop the CL CD. Well, the drag pullers. Uh, we certainly thought that that's an Alpha. Yeah. Well, I think uh, we're having troubles with uh, getting our cameras to focus on our tufts. For so, no reason they focus. Uh, and I like people to hang out. People hang out with cameras. So I think what we ought to do is uh, put the right tips on, look at the, all the tufts on those that we can. So let's uh, uh, shut down. I accidentally nudged the camera.
you probably haven't installed all the stuff on it. Okay, and that's that. We'll have to check for you if you think that they might have been a little bit. Our drag polos are a pretty good match, too. Yeah. It's so good, I almost can't believe it's true. <laughs> it is true. Didn't you have faith? <laughs> I think we're all kind of like, oh, <laughs> so, yeah. Except for, you know, once we get past 15 degrees, better if you better hold yeah, on. Yeah, you really don't want to stop all of this play. You better hold on. <laughs> Wait, our data, our data matches too well. I think something's wrong. <laughs> Like going up, going up, going up, and going down. Pretty good. Still reading it. Still reading it. Still reading it. Yes, definitely. It's one file. Hopefully, that's the words. Actually, I just brought my laptop. I'm sorry. No, you know, realistically, I should have my charger. And I don't know why I didn't have it. Nice uh, airflow, very nice. Yeah, no. Very little uh, change in drag. The here, coefficient of the range you're going to fly in. Uh, okay. The difference yeah. between what you see here would be considered significant uh, by Boeing. Um, from this one, this one, that, that, that difference would be something you have to go in and look at a lot. To this is significant. That is. Yeah. That is one count. Drag account is significant. It's 0 0.0001. Yeah. It's significant. And we're Probably do it to two or three drag counts. Let's see. Uh, is this 50 counts of drag? 0 0.05? Yes. Okay. If you hover over a point, it'll tell you what the value yeah, is. Yeah, I was going to say. It's not quite lined up, so. Okay. So, we, really, the one curve was outside of the other. Um, like I said, it's a drag. It's probably 10 drag points or something. Maybe five drag points. It's pretty good. Yeah. It's kind of, you know, take a lot more care set up for me. Uh, so, uh, very good for having a model for a day. Now, the reason we're flying in is over here, around 0.5. Well, it seems to be closer over here and further. Well, the about drag is way too high up here, and that's probably the general number of 
So uh, I think to be a higher rentals number, this could go straight on. Keep going up. I guess it would be best exactly what you want to do. So we're going to forward based on, or a rentals number based on the floor that's less than a million. Uh, and you see that the tops in the oil, uh, we have a moving edge bubble on this, which is common for the rentals numbers. Are. But that effectively trips the boundary there, trips the dry line. And so that right over the edge bubble. Set, uh, take the data set, run the winglet. Uh, so, what we need to do is uh, set all of our. Uh, Okay. Uh, we have the blended winglets on now. My guy's there. Okay, we're starting to crank the wind tunnel up again.
We can hear you guys right now if you are talking. Uh, sorry, it just like cut out on us, our internet connection. You're back. Howdy. So we lit, it's like there's like magnets and then like... And those two pins? Yeah, like and those pins. Apparently. We tested it out yesterday to make sure it didn't like fall off. And you're like, oh, that's not going to work. Oh, yeah, Dr. Sullivan did scotch tape that we looked on. That's right. Great and sheer. See, uh, you're getting the stall actually. Put uh, winglet on there. Uh, you can, uh, you can uh, see the wing start to shake quite a bit. So it's bouncing around. Good. 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 Good.
Tulsa. Well, David is uh, uh, reducing that data and getting it together. Uh, taking a look now at the uh, cuffs on the buttons. Let's come back down a low enough angle. Uh, have a cash flow. One of the things about uh, all the black string you see there, the cuffs, are that got them a little close together so that uh, on, the, on the screen you see uh, some of these have uh, made it go together. They curl when it's turbulent, they stick together. So you'd like to keep them a little bit further spaced than that so you don't do that. Uh, Come up with an angle of attack. And now, slowly bring up the angle of attack. Boom. Installed. Uh, so now, it's a little hard to tell because these are under some scotch tape. Uh, normally, white on black, we don't see that, but uh, we've got a white mod and we've got a black mod. Come back. Uh, now you can see that the um, cuffs are going back. On the model, it's kind of very much All of a sudden, right there, uh, cuffs in this region turned around and went back. So there's hysteresis. So I have to go way back beyond it to get him to come back. Uh, um, oops. I go fast like that. You can see him switch the attach, particularly in the outer, outer portion here. You can see we're attached now. And then I'll sweep up an angle of attack. Back to going forward. So we can install it. So, okay, David's got the data now. Take one below. This is the elevator to Alpha. Are you showing your screen? Yeah. I hope so. Oh, I guess it didn't work. I could just see the Excel file. Okay. Oh, okay. Why is this over this? Go away. So, what are we looking at, David? The green uh, triangles are the winglet data, the plotted over the rake wing data. So, looks like pretty similar. So you have three sets of data here? Yeah. The first rake wing, the second rake wing run, and the winglet wing. So the CL alpha looks the same. Let's take a look at that. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. yeah we were, we took off some drag here. We did. Who designed that up in the morning? Nice. That is classic uh, data. It shows the over the range of operation. Whoops. Trying to zoom in. Yeah. Okay. Over range. Of, uh, over the range of operation, which is. Uh, here, okay. yeah, we'll do that in a second. But oh. we see rake tip data and the repeatable rake tip data, and then we see the data from the blended wing. Run. We expect the same lift coefficient to have less drag. And David's going to change the graph. Uh, 
<laughs> Not good. Why is it? What's good? If you go back and do that, that's right. Okay. I can. You can just hit on the flight. Uh, okay. Oh, maybe one. Where is it still working? There it is. What to do? So, uh. I cut it off at point oh five, and that's that's what I tend to do. Well, that would be accidents. It's hard. It's hard to do the minimum, keep the minimum on the auto. Okay. Uh, we want to go 0.05 max and 0.03 man. Yeah, I got zero to 0.05. Okay, so, so fixed, we don't want to go zero. We want to go about um, 0.03, right? And then we want to go, this time, fixed about uh, uh, 0.05. Like a different box. Yeah. Yeah. It just looks good really stretched out. Okay, so we gotta change the other axis also there. Yeah. So about uh, point three to point three. Yeah. That makes your data look bad too, doesn't it? At a big scale, it looks better. Iteration is not good here. A couple of iterations. Okay, so what we see then is this is the difference. Right. What we'd like to do is uh, actually uh, put in some. Uh, Now what we can see is we've got a, a shift of maybe uh, 20 counts between uh, uh, the uh, rate tip and the um, blended frame line. So that's a, a good increase. Uh, well, between the, origin, between the original and the blended wing line, but between the second and the blended wing narrower. Well, that's the difference. Now that we've blown this up, we see if there was a difference. We're talking about that earlier. A difference the first run and the second time. For the right wing. For the right wing. Yeah. There was, yeah. Okay. Let's uh, uh, Second sweep with this one. Get that in. Okay, the second sweep. Then we're going to do a little bit of foam base. Uh, right.
Index, actually. Index. What's yeah. that? Uh, modeling. Is it as good as both of those? It's different. Um, one of the reasons. The second uh, data set was a blend between We're going to shut down. And one of my graduate students, Nick, is going to put on some uh, fluorescent oil. Let's see what we can do with that. Okay, I'm going to shut down when you open up. David to uh, show okay. what we've got here. Is it, is it just uh, on the same graph for everybody, or oh, wow. is that okay? Oh yeah. This uh, battery laptop is toast. Okay.
Come on, legend, move over here. That's loud. You looked away. Second run was a little bit. Was it over? Okay. Drag. All right. See the purple and the green yeah. are there. Okay. Okay, we're good. We're going to just do some uh, 12 inch runs now. Uh, I'll have all the data. Gonna yeah. Put all the data together.
I don't know what it looks like before. I think it's fantastic. <laughs> no, it's not connecting to this one right now. Yes. Yeah, oh, oops. Uh, uh.
First start to see big time. Yes. <laughs> 
Of course, I can do it with this guy. Yeah, that's right. I need to see it. It's still out of focus. Yeah. I don't think there's nothing to do about it. Well, we can see the uh, big tufts on the wing light with that. Uh, but our camera's just not uh, able to focus on the. Uh, on all the other tufts very well. Now I, I could visually see all the tufts going uh, uh, upstream, but I can't seem to get you a picture uh, on Google Hangout of, uh, of what they look like. Uh, you can't see the uh, flow coming off of the uh, blended winglet with those long tufts. Uh, the, the winglet is not stalled. Uh, it's, still, it's still hanging in there, but the main wing is all entirely stalled. Okay. I think that's uh, that's all the tests that we're going to do. Uh, we have the lift, drag, and pitching moment, and we can get those plots and comparisons into the final report. Uh, we can also get some pictures of the model in, the, in its testing conditions, uh, the flow visualization, the tufts, and just in the in general, you can add those to the report as well. Uh, maybe, is there anything else that you would like or do we need for the, the end of the project? No, I think you're good. Um, I thought this was great right here to see uh, all the videos come together, everybody kind of have a chance to uh, to listen in. So, um, yeah, if you guys just include the data, the some of the pictures in the report, and just all the pictures you have, um, I'd just like to have a copy for reference, if that's okay with you guys. Uh, so if you can just, if you want to throw them on Yammer or whatever, that'd be great, as well as the uh, 
uh, the data sheet. Uh, un unless you're keeping the Google Doc, then just make sure that we have the link to all the data. I'd like to just have a copy of the final version there. Yeah, I mean, I think we can we can update the final version of the the data on Google Docs, and then we can also we we'll also have that data in the in the report as well. So. Right. I think yeah. The files, files are better. We'll, we'll send out the files. Yeah, and we'll we also send out the Excel files as a backup. Yeah, that sounds great. If you can do that, just and, and you know, those don't have to have any pretty dressing with it. That can be just a raw data. I'd just like to uh, have those for reference for the future. Okay. But, yeah, great job, guys. So uh, I hope you had fun with this, too. I know this uh, this was really exciting for me to watch this. So. Yeah, no, this, this, this was pretty fun. I think uh, the setup was a little bit of a hassle, but I think actually seeing the results of our work in the, in the model would be pretty cool. Great. All right. Well, thank you, guys. I'm going to shut down the WebEx then, and um, I guess you guys will take care of the Google Hangout and just uh, make sure to post a link to that when uh, when you guys are done, please. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Thanks. Have a good one. See you.